Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today, we're going to be making some music with Ultron. So here's a preview. Uh, this is where we're going to wrap up. Uh, still quite a bit of things we need to do or could do, but all the sounds, every single sound, some of the effects and stuff that I'm doing and techniques are not Ultron, but everything else is 100% Ultron from the drums to the leads to the pads. It's all there. Uh, so let's give this a quick listen. Yeah, so there's still a lot of work to be done on the mix and the writing and all that stuff, but the sounds are mostly picked. Got a few transitional things I think that could be pretty cool and some additional like things with reverb and spacing that we could do here that I could think just make this soar to the next level. Uh, but that's the preview. All right, now that you've heard the preview, let's dive right into this. So I kind of want to keep things sort of snappy and moving along here. We are going to be creating a section of a track. Uh, we're starting completely from scratch. We're going to be using Ultron for basically everything. So Ultron has two sides to it. There's this instrument side, which is kind of the standard of what you would think. And there's just like loads and loads of patches underneath every one of these categories, just like a mind blowing number of patches. And then they've also got these multis. Um, and the multis are kind of like a whole song in a preset. So I'm not going to really be using these multis this time around. But if we go in here and just like pick one, right here's Rockstar and play a note. It's, it's a very fully featured library. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna stay away from this sort of a workflow just cause I don't usually work this way. Uh, I'm a little more familiar with, you know, the sort of standard, you pick an instrument, you load it up and it works. So let's go at first, let's, uh, let's dig through some of the drums. I wanna do something kind of up tempo uh, let's try 150. I rarely write music at 150. Uh, I think it would be kind of cool. Let's see what we got. We have a festival kit here. Beautiful. It's actually perfect. So we're going to put one on here, drums. So the way I do it is I have a contact that has um, one contact feeds out 16 channels that like go to FL. And so you're going to see me load a bunch of instruments and then each one these are like MIDI tracks, just so you kind of know what's happening. You can follow along. Now, while I'm here, I should mention uh, just some of the cool things here. You've got a whole bunch of like sort of the standard stuff you'd expect, but you've also got these pages with a bunch of additional options. Uh, if you want to get a lot more crazy, the creator was intent on making it feel more like a synthesizer than a sampler, uh, but they definitely also utilize the sampling capability uh, very well. So... Uh, there's power here if you're really looking for it. I'm going to try and stay on the surface level as much as possible because I'm more interested in doing sequencing right now. So let's go ahead and go into drums. Let's find that kick. It was that one. Okay, let's just go hard four to the floor right off the bat. And we will take this and we'll do like a double thing. And let's just, you know, get the vibe. Yeah, will this work? And then here uh, on this bit, we need something kind of different, right? So let's just see what else what else we got. I'm going to grab this, make it unique. And uh, let's see here. Do we have a variation on this kick per chance? A bunch of sub layers. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, so we got a bunch of, you know, just a standard drum kit. Uh, I wanna do something here kind of with the pitch a little bit. Or maybe not, maybe we leave it the same. 
but we just do something like that. And then we bring in a, so we'll go ahead and uh, let's keep these separate. We'll keep them separate for now. We'll create a new pattern here. We'll merge these. And on this one, we'll bring in another element. Where's those hi-hats? Usually they sit on like F sharp. Yeah, F, F sharp. We're gonna have these guys come in. Uh, we'll make them the right length so we can hit Control B to do it quickly. Okay, we're gonna get a strong vibe going right off at the beginning. And then maybe we'll just do a, a quick intro riser thing, right? Uh, so we're gonna start off with this as our fundamental hi-hats. And then can we gate these? If I like make these short, will this work? No, we cannot gate them, but I'm willing to bet we can add notes. And then what other hi-hats do we have here? We'll put some like extra little goodness in there. And then maybe, can we give the illusion of gating by going to that, that one? What is it, this one? I want to copy this line and just bring this up. It's weird if it just disappears. And let's add in a couple of fills here. That's, I like that one, that one's cool. So we have here our beginning, sort of some drums going on. Let's add in, we, we need some additional sounds. So we've got our drums sort of figured out, so that was really fast. Uh, let's add in, let's see what we got in backgrounds here really quick. We've got some country, some Hollywood stuff, some pop. Uh, let's look for, we got one called Radiance. I kind of want to know what that's about. So this would be our background. We'll just name it BG. Um, this could work as a lead. Why is this called a background? This really works as a lead. Yeah, that works great as a lead. Um, in fact, I like, I like what I just played, which is rare. <laughs> Do you think I stand a shot of playing this in? That's the question. I never play the things in correctly. Uh, let's get our metronome going, even though we have a kick drum, just because. Okay, I dig that. Um, I'm gonna come in here and clean it up a bit. Let's 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 think about this. So we're gonna have the drums. Drums are gonna hit. Um, we'll come in with this, and then maybe on the second take that'll happen. So we'll have sort of this sort of a structure where they come in like that. And I've got some ideas of things we could do tonally with that drum. Let's hear this a little bit more on the mark. We'll 
we'll have this sustain all the way through. This as well. I think that a before feeling is important, so we're gonna keep that there. And then this, this coming in early, I think is another one, but it's a little too early. This whole phrase, in fact. Yeah, and then this could definitely hit on the downbeat. Move that back, move this back. We'll keep that coming in here. We'll keep that slide. I should have seen that one coming. I don't know why I was pushing so hard early. Oh, we'll come in here, sweep this back. Yeah, so you might quantize this. Could be probably a little quicker. Um, I, I think it, just touching it up like this leaves it a little more human feeling. Yeah, move this back, move this back, move this back. Move this back. <laughs> Move that back just as much. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that kind of where it is. And then this end is a kind of like a, a trill thing, so that's fine. We, we could probably time the trill a smidge, but this one is actually pretty on point, these last two notes. Okay, we'll turn the metronome off. We didn't need it for that part, but um, some of I have the metronome on just gives me good guidance. Uh, okay, so let's keep on. Why is this above this? We loaded, we loaded this one second. That's weird. And it should be on MIDI channel too. Yeah, I don't know what the heck to do with that. Uh, okay, uh, let's try out Radiance 2. I'm just curious now. They both sound real nice. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's load up both of them. And I am going to... Uh, I guess you have to click at the top to drag them down. I swore it used to load them and not the bottom and not the top. Has it always been like that? Uh, let's go ahead and grab MIDI channel 3 and we might want them to do something different later on. Let's treat them as a layer. So I'm going to send it to port 2 so they both trigger. I think that's going to be kind of cooler. We're gonna definitely have to change the drums up some. Like this is way too static, I think, to be interesting. Uh, but we're getting the skeleton uh, coming along here. I'm beginning to think here on some of these bits. These long bits, right? Something, something should happen. There should be a thing that goes on. Now we could go into the engine. Think about automating things inside of Contact. Is it's just a huge pain to move things around. Um, do we have mod wheel stuff? Is that a thing? Like if I move this? There's definitely stuff attached to the mod wheel. I probably just did a jump cut because there was a bunch of FL Studio routing junk you have to do with contact. But now we've got the sounds coming out. We could solo them here. What I'm thinking of is adding a wave shaper with just a crazy high curve. And we are going to have it down most of the time, but it'll just be kind of an expressive thing. Uh, so that on these longer notes. We can sort of wind up and down and we'll see if this works out. Sort of like that.
And what I'm thinking is we also have a verb and they have a verb in there, but I'm talking about a verb perhaps pre-wave shaper. This could be kind of a weird concept. So let's toss on, I'm just gonna go with the stock um, for, I forgot I renamed it to make my life easier. Um, so we're just gonna do that. We're also going to automate this down and have it merge on at these. In fact, we don't even need this. We could take this off. We could go to this. We could go to link to controller. Then we go to wave shaper mix level and make sure this isn't on so it can control multiple things. Hit okay. And now, yeah, that's pretty dope. I mean, if we make this like a lot more. Okay, cool. So we've got our drums here. I'm just thinking I kind of want some pad atmosphere sounds. Uh, let's look through here real quick. So these are, I thought these were like background. Let's see what we have here. We have synthetic, smart, pad and strings. Maybe pad and strings is more what I've been looking for. We've got this one called big pads. Uh, let's hear what that one brings to the table. Oh, nothing because I have it all that one soloed right now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling you big pads. Let's find uh, another one. And keyboard focus keeps going away. Uh, you have to trigger it through the MIDI plugin. Otherwise, it'll trigger whatever the first one you loaded is, uh, which is sort of a disadvantage to the workflow of loading them all in, in one place. But you save RAM by doing it this way. I'm not quite sure if that's the right fit. It's a nice sound, though. I kind of like that. It's got that bit crushed, uh, whatever that is in the background, some bit crushed stuff going on. Um, so we'll call this our pad. We're going to call this our lead. and Not no background, that's for sure. Um, let's go in here and... Uh, knowing my chords would help. <laughs> I think it was C minor 9 was the first one. And let's, uh, let's just toss it off on the thirds. We could have it just as straight up in the background and maybe we could arpeggiate it. In fact, what we could do is, oh no, I didn't do any chords on this one. Uh, I'm thinking of something I did earlier. Uh, so we don't have any chords yet, but I already have some ideas of what we could do. Here though, I'm thinking, we're playing, um, we're starting off on C minor for sure and kind of staying on C minor. Except for this last note kind of changes. We're, we're still at a C, but we could kind of get away with doing something a little different there. So let's do that. Um, let's take that. We'll do a, a F perhaps. F minor. And then here, uh, we will take this. We'll keep this relatively the same. We might have to pick a different sound. And we'll make this like a, a D. Uh, well, I'm going for a G, a G chord. It might be a little too much motion there, especially like this coming down. It might make more sense if we go all the way to a G and leave out the, uh, the third. Here, we'll definitely move to, we'll pivot to a G and add the third in. Okay, okay, okay. So I do like the vibe. Uh, let's really quick try. I'm going to grab, um, do we want to gate it? We, we could try gating. Let's try gating. Uh, we're going to do old school gating. I'm straight up going to automate the volume of the channel. And... We're just going to do it like this. Sometimes it's just a little bit faster. 
So we'll just do this. This like thing. We'll have it repeat every bar so we don't have to think so hard. <laughs> And let's get this going out its own channel. Everything's kind of loud too, so we're gonna have to deal with that. Uh, I've got an extra output here, five and six, so we'll send it out that one. And we can add more as needed. There we go, this is our pad. Let's just make sure things are working the way I think they are. And they're not, it is exactly what you don't wanna see. Okay, so the issue is uh, the MIDI volume there ain't got nothing to do with the actual volume it's generating, I suppose. So we're gonna go for a balance and we're just gonna link this. We're again gonna pull the link to controller trick and go over there just so we don't have to recreate this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's working out quite nice now. So let's uh, do this. Thinking maybe something a little more uh, up tempo ish a little bit. I know there's like this whole smart sequencer aspect of the synth as well. I could probably do a lot of this, but I, I'm gonna want to be uh, specific at some parts and just really detailed. I'm just that way when I when I work, I, I tend to I like doing things at this level. I find it enjoyable. And what we can do. This would be interesting. I'm not sure how, how much of this we want to do. We can lower the maximum. So it starts off lower. And so that means that this, this peak isn't as high as you think. And then we can open it up. And you see that's like too much. But if we do this. See what I'm saying? Or well, something like that. And we could, we could leave, leave it come up. This is the automation of an automation. You know, wrap your head around that one. This is crazy stuff. Okay, let's uh, let's pull these back a little bit. I'm, I'm rethinking the melody I have here now that we've got this sort of stuff going. If we just do the drums. Just thinking, uh, let me come up. I'm, I'm going to look at the melody again real quick. Okay. So I've listened to it a few times, experimented a bit. I've decided I actually like the melody. I just think it's the tone that bothers me. And it's not that this tone is not good. It's that it's not quite where I want it yet. So what I'm thinking is let's layer in a bass with this or, or some sort of an, another sound. And it's also tame the high end a bit. So I'm going to use the parametric EQ on this and just sort of, you know, tame back the high end, remove some of the low end. And let's experiment here. I'm going to solo this up. Uh, let's find another element for the lead that would work well. So to do that, we're going to load up another Ultron. In this case, um, we could check out the lead category. Um, we could also check out bass, which has some pretty cool stuff in there as well. Let's go for lead first. They've got a couple that are like kind of, I guess, built for this called like Festival or Festival One. Um, so let's try these out real quick. And uh, in order to make this layer up correctly, we need to give it the same output of output two. And we want it to also be triggered by MIDI channel two, just like our others. And I'll probably um, also group it up here as well. So it's not so confusing. Oh, bananas. That was loud. Okay. Uh, what did we do wrong there? What did we do wrong? Oh, it's because this is soloed here. So it turns off the automation clips. Uh, so we just need to manually turn these other ones off. Because yeah, what you heard was the wave shaper and the reverb <laughs> at full blast if you were to just leave them on. Let's try another one. Cool. 
got a loop. I like this one. I think I'm looking for something that's festival lead. They did have like the festival sound, but uh, I, the other two sounds kind of do that. So I'm looking for something a little more, I guess, cutting. And this one does it. Uh, well, what I'd like to do is make this an octave lower. So to do so, they've got a gate control here with speed, but it wouldn't let us do the level of control that we just did over there. Um, so to bring it an octave lower, let's just use the tune control. Bring this down 12. <laughs> So, okay, um, I'm kind of curious. I haven't looked a lot at the drum patches here. If we go to the mixer, uh, is this the mixer? Oh, I was expecting something a little bit different. So I don't know if there's a way to individually pan the drum elements, which is something I'd, I'd like to be able to do. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's possible, but I'd like to be able to move that hi-hat around. So I might at some point uh, pull the hi-hat out and move it around manually. <laughs> high bit there. <laughs> It's a little too loud. It sounds cool and so, but it won't work later. Okay, so I'm just thinking here, let's really quick pull those um, pads out. I'm gonna copy them and put them on their own track. We'll paste them in. See if we can't build out a little bit more of a of an intro type deal. So we're gonna take these, move them over. So the max output will be turning on over time. Maybe bring this up a touch, have it maybe come up some right there and then maybe fade out during the drums. And then what I'm thinking for the drum patch, which is going to be coming through on the main output. So let's uh, give it its own output. So we've got here this one that's been unassigned. We'll go this to uh, unassigned one and two. We'll, we'll this send it to the next output. Oh, and then we need to pick that as the output. This, this may or may not work. I think it would. The drums are way over here, whatever. I'm chill with that. We're going to start off with a parametric EQ filter sweep on it. We're gonna do a high pass. So we're gonna do type high pass. We're gonna make it a high order like steep eight. And we are going to automate the frequency down. So we're going to take this, it'll start off.
It's kind of corny right now. So this is gonna be a powerful tool. Uh, this comes on way too early, right? So let's give this another like couple bars to breathe. We'll have this come out. We'll repeat pattern two. Oh my word. Uh, twice here, like so. And we're probably gonna need to change this fill out here. Um, so we're gonna have this come down more smoothly, maybe with this sudden drop at the end. That might have been a good idea. And we'll have these come over. And I'm thinking on pattern five. You know, we've got this, these nice chord sounds coming in. Let's add another uh, layer to that, shall we? Uh, I think that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go pad, we'll do like, you know, pad layer. Or in fact, nah, we'll, we'll just send it to the same MIDI out. So we're just gonna grab, hmm, no, that's a good question. I think we need to do it as a separate one. The way I did it, it would make sense if they went together. We can automate the volume of it separately. We'll figure out how to do that. So we'll go for Ultron. We're gonna go for pads. Uh, let's just look for something. Synth and choir sounds kind of promising. Um, we're gonna send this one to the same outputs as the other pads. So this will, let's move this to the bottom so that it's kind of grouped together. We'll do this one on channel three output will match the same, so we'll do three. Um, let's just hear it with its on. And let's try lowering this one an octave. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're not gonna have this on initially, not like this. Uh, we're going to automate it on over time. So there's this volume slider control here, uh, which I recall now there's a special way to connect it up. So if we go into, but I wanna control this individually. So in fact, let's do this. Um, I don't know if we wanna do it like this. Browse, if I just move this, will this, nope, not gonna work, huh? Let's grab a blank automation, like 311, attach it to that, and then, We'll go to Browse Parameters, Contact, am I right? Okay, now we move it, and there you go. We got ourselves a control. And let's go ahead and have this set up to be off, and then we'll just turn it on over time. So I know if you're like new or whatever, or if you're not used to working FL, Contact is kind of complicated because you can have like multiple, essentially, VSTs in here. So how does it know what to automate to what? Well, the answer is you can just straight up go to the automation page and just like assign it to something. So for Ultron, that's how we can get at the volume of just that one instance of Ultron. So now it'll come in, but at the beginning, we have just it and then it will it'll merge in over time here. We'll make this kind of more logarithmic. Thing, you know, like the, you know, like you get the big, the big snare there. Um, I'm not digging. I like the vibe up to here, where things sort of come in. Now on this, uh, let's go into this pattern. We'll make it unique, and we'll get rid of this like riff thing here. And instead, we'll we'll layer in like a different hat sound as well. So for this lead, I'm not sure if I'm vibing how this lead interacts quite yet. So I think I will actually take it off for the moment. And I believe these are the, just the same chords 
Yeah, the same pad chords. Let's lose this pattern for the moment. Let's create a new pattern, a new lead pattern, maybe one that's not so improvised. And just look at here what our op options are. Like maybe this raunchy low thing. Let me come up with something a little more guided, I guess. Okay, I've got sort of a, a rough idea of what I think kind of work here. So these, the patch Ultron provides has this like velocity thing. I'm thinking we might be able to play with this in an interesting way. So like, dun, 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 dun. You picking up what I'm putting down? So. I sort of have it be the single note thing, but the velocities could be important. Oh yeah, and then this needs to be the true. And I think it, the they take on the characteristics of whatever the first velocity level that was hit when it was sliding. So for this, we need to shorten this up because I think these being soft and this one being like louder would be cool. Something like that. I think this is gonna work out. I think this is going to be cooler as an idea than even though it's a simpler like you know it's, it's all c with a couple notes at the end i think it's going to work out a little bit better yeah these filter sweeps how do i uh get them to be quite as soft as yeah. Oh, it's because this one, right? They, they're dictated by the, the slide. Yeah, so that's going to be important. Uh, the length of the notes here, when they overlap, is significant. Okay, we'll trim this pattern up so it looks a little nicer. Okay, let's come in here real quick. Let's look at these layers. And this one's down an octave. Let's try changing it to 12, keep it a little more maybe consonant. And I'm thinking of maybe adding one more layer to it. Um, and then I'll probably stop after this. Because we've got a pretty strong uh, background thing going on here. So we've got a dirty lead base. Uh, I want to know what that's about. So let's pull that up and we'll just drag this up to the bottom. We only need to attach it to the first layer. So two and two. We'll give it out the same stuff. Let's uh, really quick audition it. Our sharper sound, I think, is what we need. Let's just try a few others. That's pretty nice as well. Not that one.
Oh, dude, that's too low. This has like the right sort of vibe though. Okay, so there's probably been a big cut. Uh, I've been messing with the same idea the whole time, but I wanna just really quick break down a few kind of concepts I find kind of useful. I tossed on a wave shaper here and pulled up the low end. This pulls up the room space a bit. And then I found, I settled on this, this Wom bass sound. Sounds like this. Yeah, it's a pretty cool sound. And then when you mix them all in, Every layer sort of has its own like job that it, I'm beginning to feel pretty happy with. It's, it's getting there. So when you do this though, the levels, man, they can make such a dramatic difference. Just whatever lead tends to be on top. Here I might even, you know, automate these different levels so that I can get different feels at different parts. And that makes it just musically way more interesting. It's not just a static sound playing over and over and it sort of helps keep the the line i have here it'll make it sound a lot more groovy and interesting right now it's all just static though the other thing i did that was sort of a major change is the eq this eq it looks completely different now i i saw it for a interest a high pocket and an interest low pocket and it removes some of the middle um, just to create this sort of void and sometimes i can just help tonally fill things out give room for like other stuff to come through <laughs> One thing I might try here on the lead is tossing on a high pass filter sort of idea or a low pass, I mean. So if we go order, um, we'll go steep eight and we'll go type a low pass. And this here is to just help clean up anything I don't want coming through. And this will also grab that verb, which could be kind of interesting. So for example, here, I could have this really tight shape. <laughs> And then we can actually add in additional rhythms, but this actually will grab the verb sound as well, which can be what's kind of cool. And we can have it open to various amounts to provide a sense of a uh, bite, so to speak. <laughs> Maybe that's the shape that I'm gonna go with. And we do this twice, because this is the same phrase. And we could do interesting things, like have like a peak. That's something we could play with. I'm not gonna do it right now. This transition. Okay, so at this moment, when the pad reaches this transition, I think it'd be cool if it changed. Uh, tonal space. So to do this, I'm going to add a fruity, um, actually, I changed the name. We're just going to add a stereo shaper. We're just going to go for just some random delay and phase shift. And we're going to automate this on over time so that before this is, you know, off, 
And this needs to be defined at the beginning of the track so that it is always in a known state. And then we'll have it come on right here, like so, and just be on. And we're also going to toss on a reverb and just have it sort of be a wide reverb, uh, side only, and have it be very wet. And again, we're going to automate this so that over here it is off. And we'll do something like this. And then over here it turns on. Maybe we have this one ramp up. And from there, we can continue making, you know, uh, changes, adjustments. Uh, but this is where I'm going to stop for now. We'll save this as because it's really coming along. We didn't even change notes. I really think a progression would really sell that thing all the way. Um, what should we call this? What should we? We'll just call it Altron. Altron. So uh, this is where we're going to wrap up. Uh, still quite a bit of things we need to do or could do, but all the sounds, every single sound, some of the effects and stuff that I'm doing and techniques are not Altron, but. Everything else is 100% Ultron, from the drums to the leads to the pads, it's all there. Uh, so let's give this a quick listen. Yeah, so there's still a lot of work to be done on the mix and the writing and all that stuff, but the sounds are mostly picked. Got a few transitional things I think that could be pretty cool and some additional like things with reverb and spacing that we could do here that I could think just make this soar to the next level. Uh, but that's the preview. And if you're at the end of this video, thanks for watching. This is probably a longer one and I, I'm probably going to cut out a fair chunk of it as well. Uh, but hopefully you're able to follow along and you can see sort of how this library could potentially fit into your workflow. Uh, the sounds are great. It's really just massaging them into place and uh, molding them to your vision. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.